So I thought one of the things we could do today while we're out here talking about setting up, you know, a camp for longer than just a few hours, we're going to stay here a couple days, something like that. Then we need to start thinking about renewable energy and charging devices. And I've seen lots of comments on things that people prefer batteries in a lot of cases over rechargeable devices. And as traditional as I am, I think that's a ridiculous opinion. You can't buy batteries in the woods but you can recharge things in the woods very easily if you have the proper devices to do it. And some of those devices don't take up much room. Some of them take up a little more room, but give you more benefit in the end. And if you're setting up a base camp, you can afford some bigger things. And one of the things I want to look at today with you guys is the Infinite Air 18. And this is a wind powered charging device. And you can connect this to a battery with a solar device so that you can get benefits both directions if the wind's not always blowing but the sun's out, or if the sun's not out, but the wind is blowing, you can take benefits from both of them to recharge a battery bank that you can then use to charge devices from. And I think that is the key element, carrying some type of rechargeable battery bank and then a way to recharge them by solar or wind power. So let's look at this infinite air today, kind of get it set up out here in the clearing. We don't have a lot of wind today, but we have a little. It may not work for us real well all the time, but we'll combine it with a solar setup with our power film which is small enough to put in a backpack and has a solar panel built into it. I've showed it in other videos. And that will give us dual power options to recharge a battery that we can then use to recharge our devices. So the casing and stuff for this is pretty bulky as far as backpacking goes, and it's pretty heavy. But for conveyance, like this four-wheeler, a canoe, something like that, not so much. You basically have a large propeller system that you put together that comes in the box comes in this case the propellers all sit right here and the hub sits right here you put that together and you set up the device and then you screw it together so let's look at this and see what comes with it you know you've got the motor itself right here with a plug on the bottom you've got a safety strap in the front you've got tripod legs here tripod stakes here guy line stakes here plugs here that you can use to plug this thing into other devices and you've got a, a tail tail here that goes on it so that it directs it by wind to the right place so i just bump the tripod and then you've got some guy lines that go with that as well and a tripod base and a set of instructions so it's an all-inclusive kit now the one thing that i did with this kit that i changed was i changed this cord so that it had anderson power poles on it the reason I did that was because the battery I charge is a bio and a battery that I use a lot with radios and things like that. So you have in this pocket, you have a box and this is what connects to the bottom of this wind turbine when it's all set up. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And this box gives you charging ports. You have, let me put my glasses on here so you can see this a little better, but you have a DC in, which is 12 volts, and you have a switch for 12 volts or 18 volts, and you have a USB that's five volts, and all of those are in the box. So what I did was I changed this one connector that came with it so that I could plug it into a 12 volt outlet and charge a 12 volt bio -Eno battery with an Anderson power pole for things like radio. So each of these legs, three of these legs, have a screw on the bottom of them to put a stake into or a ground peg into for the tripod itself. And you just unscrew that until you get it inside and screw it down. And then it has an area here for a safety strap. So we'll assemble those first. Once we have those assembled, you have a secondary leg that goes on here and that plugs into the tripod base that is here. And so we'll get the tripod set up first to get it staked into the ground and we'll go from there. Now, these tripod legs have a strap that goes on them right here. And it's just a typical buckle cinch strap that you put around the bottom of the tripod that kind of locks it together. It's like this. You got holes here that you're supposed to push this cord through for these guidelines, but it, honestly, it's more of a pain than it's worth. 
So what I generally do is I just take these guy lines and wrap them around here at the top like this. Pull them out, cinch them down real good. Come out and stake that out and then use the adjusters to tighten it up. And I just put a bowling knot at the bottom for the stake. Okay, once we get our tripod set, all we need to do is screw the motor down into the top of the tripod. That exposes our plug on the bottom for our charging block. We have a tail rotor here that's got a shear pin that connects it to the motor, just like this. And then we take our props once we've assembled them. And this has a spinning turn ring on it here that you can use to tighten that prop up with so that you don't have to sit there and spin the prop to tighten it up. And you can just turn that down until it's tight by hand. And now you're ready to go. You wanna make sure that none of your ropes are low enough that your props can hit them. If you've got guy lines on here, like that one, there's a little bit. We'll tighten that up and we'll move it down just a shade. We'll move these down about an inch and we'll tighten them all back up and then we'll be good. All right, next thing we need to do is take this black box and this cord at the bottom just screws into the bottom. It's got a three pin connection. You just have to get that lined up. And that can be a bit of a pain to do after the fact. It's not impossible. You just have to turn it till it spins in there. And then tighten the nut. And now you're ready. And whatever you plug into this box, there's an indicator on this box. It's a green light. It'll come on when there's enough wind that this is putting out charge. So when the light's green, you're putting out enough energy to charge whatever device you've got plugged into this. And wind just died back down. So again, combining this with a solar element is definitely an option that gives you a lot of versatility for charging your equipment. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that we can kind of do this stuff. The first one is I've got my power film lightsaber max laid out in the sun. So it's being solar charged. The brick that's within that system here is being charged. I also have it plugged into the USB-C input and I have that plugged into this. So it's also being charged by the wind. Whenever we have wind, it's got power pushing into that brick. Anytime I have sun, I have power going into that brick and then I can use that brick to peripherally charge other devices. Now there's other ways that we can use this and I'm gonna set some of that up for you too to show you because it's a very multifunctional system in nature. All right, so in this case, I'm charging up a radio here, a ham radio, ICOM ham radio. And what I've done is there's a cable that comes with this setup that's basically a pigtail. And with that pigtail, you can go from the solar device like this panel, and also from the wind turbine at the same time, and take those into a single outlet, like a brick or a device, to charge it up, again, with both solar and wind power at the same time, if you have both, or it will still charge from either that you have at the time. Okay, in this case, we've taken this pigtail and we've cooked it directly to a brick slash device, because this lantern is also a storage brick so right now we're charging it up with both solar power and wind power because we've got it pigtailed to both devices zon over there relaxing in the sun crazy guy's been up here all day and so we're charging a brick but we're also charging a device that we can use as well and then we can charge other devices off that brick in the convenience of our camp shelter inside the tent things like that in inclement weather we can go ahead and charge our cell phone or other devices from this brick we also have a lantern. So there's a lot of multifunctionality in a system like this. And again, you know, obviously this is not something you're gonna backpack around, but if you have conveyance of any kind, it's a fairly small package to carry a foldable solar panel that's 20 or 40 watts, and then carry this air-driven infinite air because it will also give you charging capabilities beyond solar when you have clouds. 
So one thing we should discuss while we're talking about this infinite air, we're talking about wind energy and we're talking about solar energy and storing that energy. And that's the key to this is storing that energy. You're really not gonna take this device. You can see that just turned green. So it's been on there long enough to charge now. It was red when we started. And it's been about an hour, I guess, something like that since I put it on there. However, the point is that is an internal brick as well as a lantern. And the power film solar lightsaber max that we had is also a brick as well as a charging device so you're going to store this energy whether it's sun energy or whether it's wind energy into some type of brick and use that to charge your peripheral devices now you can directly plug something like a cell phone or a camera or a gopro or even a radio like i did before into these devices and it will work but chances are you'll be using devices like that so storing that energy into a brick for later use is a much better option for you. So an example of a device charging directly through this pigtail would be this Pathfinder headlight. You can see there's a green light on the box, which means there's power going to the box, and that's probably from the solar panels because the wind turbine is not turning right now. But again, that's the greatness of this system is that you're getting a charge whether you have sun or whether you have wind, you get charged from both with this system that I've got set up here. And so we're charging this headlight that we may use later on. Okay, you can see our headlights turn green now, so it's ready for the evening. And we can put a different brick on charge here and keep on rock and rolling and harnessing that power from nature. Again, this is the difference between carrying batteries is being able to carry power with you in the form of bricks and devices and being able to renew that energy even out in the woods. It's